the last time I was up here was just a couple of months ago to go out to the Triassic Jurassic boundary at Ferguson Hill. And this was a road, and it is no longer a road. That's because there was a big storm that caused some rain and some flooding, and flash floods in the desert are a really interesting event. They cause a lot of cool features, um, and one of which seems to be a stream bed in this canyon on what used to be a road. I opened my eyes in sunlight, broke over the marsh. My lungs filled up with sulfur, I was all washed up. Charred up a storm drain and into a gutter. I had no memory of who I was. Five hundred years. So I have my favorite field assistant with me here today, Ted. He's um, taking a break, but he's also very good at finding things. Canyon, Nevada, which is right outside of Mina, a small mining community that's mostly a ghost town these days. There are a lot of abandoned mines in the region. Copper was one of the biggest ores that was mined here, but I'm interested in the Triassic-Jurassic sedimentary rocks that are telling the story paleontologically. Today we're going to look at some of the rocks after the end Triassic mass extinction, I'm going to look at the Jurassic. I'm interested in finding out which species made it through this mass extinction and why. In my hands, I hold the ashes. In my veins, black pitch I study the microstructure and mount these corals in epoxy create thin sections of the corals so that I can look at it. These are just a few micron thick slices of the corals. Way, sun, dark clouds get round me to the west In Earth's history, in the 3.5 billion years of life that we know of on Earth, there have been at least five times that life has been decimated. More than half, sometimes more than 90% of life on Earth um, was completely wiped out. The one that most people are most familiar with is the mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. So that was the asteroid impact. Um, I actually study the end Triassic mass extinction, which I find to be the most interesting. There wasn't a catastrophic event involved with the end Triassic mass extinction. What happened was a combination effect that caused massive global climate change. The supercontinent Pangaea was breaking apart. Along with that, we had the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, which was like a rip in the Earth's crust. And this rip in the Earth's crust was just spewing out greenhouse gases. What I look at is the recovery. In the earliest time of the Jurassic, right after reefs collapse worldwide, what corals survive and why? who rapidly evolves afterwards. These are the critters that would eventually, you know, 20, 25 million years later, lead to the recovery. And it has a lot of parallels with the reef collapse of today. And one of the big reasons why reefs today are in trouble is because of ocean acidification. Corals actually starve themselves of their symbiotic algae, and it's uh, called coral bleaching. And when they have a even slight changes in their ecosystem, in their waves or their pH or anything, they, they can't handle it. And it's, a, like I said, a snowball effect. So I think that the work that we do with the end Triassic mass extinction and trying to understand who survives and why they survive is incredibly important. Sometimes it feels like I have always been here. Sometimes it feels like I will never.